Hello, everyone. I'm back. This is video number three with the faculty for the AJC Coaching School. And today I'm joined by my colleague, dear friend, and just, just an amazing human being. And she didn't pay me to say that, Kathy Casey. Kathy is someone I met very, very early on in my coaching career. I think it was January 2013. And I know it shows how long uh, I've been around as well. Now I can't, I can no longer say I'm, I'm new and she's really great at what she does. She's got so many wonderful facets to her work. And I mean, she's really, really well regarded by everyone that knows her, but there were a couple of reasons why I've asked Kathy to be on the faculty. So this video is a video where I wanted to introduce you, Kathy, let people know a little bit about you. But also there were a couple of reasons that I wanted to talk about, which were how you don't have a website and you don't do tons of marketing, but you're, you're always busy, which kind of goes against a lot of what people are teaching around growing a coaching practice and working with people. And two, how you're a real action taker, but you're not an action taker in a kind of raw, raw way that you might see some people online, it's just purposeful and, and you get things done. So I'm really excited for you to be part of the school. I'm really excited for you to be part of the faculty. So thank you for saying yes, firstly. Well, I was honored to be asked and uh, I'm just excited about seeing you again. Uh, I said, when we got online together, I thought, oh, I, fine, you can ask me all these great questions, but I'm just here just to see you again. Be So many fond memories of your mom and your sisters. And, you know, I just, it, it, it's just great to see you. It's just great to see you. So go ahead and ask me all the questions. <laughs> well, well, you know what? That Maybe that's a nice segue yeah. because we were kind of talking about this before the recording and it kind of talks to the first point I was saying, like, you don't have a website. You're not on a social. Everyone's talking about, oh, you need to be on the next social media thing. You need to be on TikTok. You need to be on this and that. You don't do any of that. Yeah. You don't do any of that. And you're really like, you're always working as far as I see, you know, you, you're not, not, and not in a bad way in terms of you have work yeah, yeah, yeah. all the time. And you tell me what you see, but this is what I see of you, Kathy. And it's funny, like you said, oh, Kush, I'm just here because I, I like you. And I think that's something that's really that's underplayed, right? It's like, yeah. there's a saying everywhere you go, there you are. And in coaching, I mean, it's a relationship business. And I thought when I started out, that means like, I've got to be really good at small talk. You know, I've got to, I've got to say all, and which I, which I, which I really struggle with, as you probably can tell, I don't do small talk, but, but people, people just know people. And so when I met you, I was just like, oh, she's fun. She's wise. You know, like I got a feel for you. And even though we haven't spoken for so long, mm -hmm. When I came to like thinking about my faculty and you were one of the first names. And so again, there's this phrase in the coaching world that's going around a lot now, which is it's about who you're being. Yeah. And I really see that in you. Would you see something different or would you agree with that? Well, yes, I agree with that. And I, I didn't know that about myself because I've sort of always been this way. But, you know, I, I grew up in a large family, oldest of 10, Boston, Irish, Catholic. So I grew up kind of in a big brawl environment, you know, <laughs> real active and noisy and loud and, and a lot of humor and a lot of, you know, just, you know, being crazy. But I think at some point I just decided, well, I didn't decide, I was just being myself no matter where I would go. So I'm going to say something really bizarre right now. And I think this is the secret. If I got a job working at McDonald's tomorrow, and I think, okay, great. Okay. I'm going to be working at McDonald's. I would start to really get excited about it. And the excitement would be the people. I love that you said coaching is a relationship process. It's all about connection and relationship. So no matter what I've done over the years, before I did the work I'm doing now, I, I've worked in department stores. I've worked, I've been a correctional officer. I've been, you know, everything under the sun, but no matter where I'm working, I love what I'm doing mostly because of the people. I love the people. So if I'm at McDonald's, I'd be connecting to the people. Who are they? I'd love the drive up window just to see new people all the time and see how they're doing. I mean, I, to me, it's just connecting. I've worked in Silicon Valley with engineers and marketing people and all that stuff back when in the PC days. This is before. You know, they were making workstations, PCs, and I'm working with these high tech, super smart people. But it was my relationship with them. I didn't know anything about technology, but I became a 
crucial member of the team because of how I was able to work with them. Not so much content knowledge as much as, well, if you're going to design that into your into the system, don't do it because I'm t- my sales reps are telling me we're not going to get it for a year. So I was kind of the communications person. To me, the secret is just being yourself, whatever that is. I have colleagues that are very low key. And I remember one time we did a training in, the, in a business in a company and I do my thing and everybody has a good time and people get what I'm saying. And it's really, it's fun. So it was her turn and she presented and you could hear a pin drop and they were with her and the, the feeling was awesome. So the feeling ended up being the same, but she was being her and I was being me. And she felt bad about it. She said, you know, Kathy, I'm boring. They love you more than me. And I, I looked, I said, no, don't you do that. You could hear what you were saying. You had the room. You had the room. And that surprised her because she had this idea that she should have been different. But her presence and, and her quietness uh, helped me really hear some new things. So I think first of all, we should compare ourselves. I think that's one big thing. There's no one way to how to be as a coach as a facilitator, as anything, but just be yourself. And when I'm in that good feeling of loving what I do, whether I'm working at McDonald's or I just finished a training training program and I'm working with a whole group of people wanting to learn how to do this stuff, to me, there's no difference. Inmates in jail, juveniles in, in juvenile hall, homeless people living under the bridge, governmental employees running huge budgets, hospital employees running huge public hospitals. See, to me, we're all the same. And so I'm just who I am. And I don't shift in my mind about how I should be given the, the, you know, the, the people or the circumstances or whatever. I'll, I'll give you a cute story. My brother, um, my brother, Ed, was the vice president of a solar company here in the States, up in Portland, Oregon. And they got a lot of federal money when Obama was in office because they wanted to get alternative energy going. So Obama came out to see the company and to see how it was going. And so my brother, Ed, was in a room with about five other guys, the top level of the company. And Obama walked into the room and my my brother was totally struck at how regular a guy he was. You know, he was just totally present with them. Hey man, how's it going? You know, how, how's the way? I mean, he was just with them. He was just being real. And so when it was time for my brother to go shake his hand, you know, cause he's come up and shaking hands. My brother looks at him. He says, Hey man, thanks for the bucks. That, that really has made a difference for us. And I'm like, you said, thanks for the bucks to the president of the United States. I mean, I'm like, Ed, how could you? And he said, Kathy, if you had been there, it felt so normal. And that was why he became president. It was that connection people fit. So that's what you have to offer. So yes, some people do, they have their, I don't do Facebook. I don't have a website. I I don't do any of that. What attracts people to me is they see my commitment. They see my enthusiasm. They see my passion, but I also love everybody. I just love people. And I think people feel that and they're drawn to me. And even though I'm not working in their field, like I'm teaching inmates in jail and this guy from business goes, hey, I want you over here in business. I, I need that because these guys, they need to be hit upside the head and I, you'd be good for that. And, and so now I'm in the business world. So it's being at ease, trusting yourself, loving what you're doing. The thing I hate hearing is people saying, well, I'm doing my day job, waiting to do what I really want to do. See, that's where we get the disconnect. See, my day job is the job, whether it's working at McDonald's, working as a coach, working as a facilitator, whatever it is, that's what I'm connected to. And that's the secret, I think, is no matter what you're doing, that's when you're with that and you have that connection to what you're doing and that desire, that's all that's required. And people feel that from you. They feel that from you. I hope I didn't go off. That topic. was absolute gold. You know, I'm, I'm kind of getting goosebumps. They're so, so good. So good. And I mean, that really applies to so many things, not just coaching. Oh, everything. Right. You know, if, if we could bring that and I'll hold my hand up. I was guilty of this. When I first started training to be a coach, I was in a full-time job 
And there was a part of me, I, I remember it clearly just before I quit to go full time, that whole year before I quit, I was like, I can't get, wait to get out of here to go over there. And yeah, yeah. one thing that I, that I had to learn the lesson the hard way was I remember when I quit my job <laughs> and I was first day and I'm coaching, I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm fired up. I felt wonderful. And then the second day I woke up and I felt the same as I did when I was in my job and I thought, oh no, what have I done? I've let go of all this security and great wage packet. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I yeah, yeah. obviously gave it a yeah, go yeah, yeah, yeah. and I've done yes. all right. But I could have brought that same enthusiasm for coaching yes, that's it. into the work that I did. And I said this to my wife, I was like, you know what? I don't think I'll ever go back into a job, but even though I've been out for so many years, if I went back into my old field, I think I'd do really well. Because there, everything there that I've had to learn yes. to be better yes. as a coach really yes. applies to anything. That's it. That's it. See, we are not what we do. See, and, and unfortunately, we learn early. You know, we, I watch my grandkids. And all right, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I want to be a baseball player. I mean, it starts early. So anything short of being a baseball player won't be good enough. You know, it's subtle, isn't it? Um, but yeah, we are not what we do. And so if you really start to notice in your life, when you, when I go shopping at Target or I, I go to 7-Eleven or I'm at, I won't talk about the gas stations right now, but right, you know, no matter who is, where, where they are, I see people. See, to me, I see people and I show up for, with four people and I connect to people and it enriches my day. It's not like I purposely like, okay, I'm going to connect to every person. But I'm just naturally just in my life. And no matter where I am, I'm, in, I'm just there. And that's, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. That feeling of satisfaction or being at ease. See, that's innate in every human being. But if we have it set up, well, I'm only going to get that when I become the coach. So, so for a whole year, you're semi-miserable. Like, oh, I can't wait to get out of here. I can't wait to get out of here. Well, that wasn't the job you were in. That's where your mind went. And see, we right. create the experience of everything. So whether I'm working at McDonald's or I'm doing what I'm doing now, or I'm doing a trainer trainer program, I'm creating my experience of that, not the actual thing that I'm doing. And when you get a, just a tiny glimmer of that, just a tiny glimmer of that, and that's what you're realizing now, oh, I could go back. Wouldn't it be fun to go back? I, I, sometimes, I have that thought. I wonder what it would be like to go back to that crazy Silicon Valley job because, you know, I live in Silicon Valley and people are just nutty right now. They don't rest. They don't sleep. People are working 12, 15 hours a day. They live at their jobs and they're profoundly mentally exhausted. And I'm thinking, how would I do jumping back into an environment like that? It would be interesting to check it out. You know, would I get caught up in that? Or would I be able to keep my grounding and, and do what I do without getting caught up in that kind of mental urgency or whatever you want to call that? So, yeah. You really walk this. You know, I, I love everything that you're saying. And you've kind of hinted at the, the real range of experience you have. Like you, you've worked in correctional institutes, prisons. And I know you've, I've heard stories of you talk about people with literally tattoos on their faces. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, one extreme all the way to, you know, executives and everything in between, you know, you so, really do work with everyone. And it, is that the secret to, because again, in coaching, there are a lot of people saying, oh, you need a niche. You need to work with only one kind of person. And again, you blow that out of the yeah, water yeah, 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 with, yeah. with you just work with people. Yeah. See, my requirement is um, that they be a human being <laughs> pretty much, you know, I don't work with dogs and I don't work with animals and things like that, but no, here's the thing. I didn't set out to like, well, I'm going to do work with inmates and then I'm going to work with business people on them. It just evolved that way. So I started where I, the only reason why I worked with inmates in jail is I was actually in the facility in jail, not doing time, but I was doing a research project to pay my way through graduate school. So I'm in there doing data collection Meanwhile, I'm learning about how state of mind works. And all of a sudden I'm realizing, well, maybe this would be helpful to these folks, you know? So now I'm doing it with these folks. Then the correctional officers, they're noticing a big change in, in the inmates and the fights are going away and all that. What do you got? What are you doing with them? And they started reading some books that I was bringing in. So they said, well, we want to learn it too, but we want to learn it differently. We're not like that. 
<laughs> I said, no problem. We'll, we'll, you, we'll do it different. We'll do a special one for you guys. But bottom line is, as I start going into these different environments, whether it's a big defense company, a religious organization, like I said, homeless shelters, drug treatment programs. And it was interesting when I was doing the business world and then flying home and going back into the jails, the jail guys knew I was traveling because I'd missed a couple of classes. And he, they knew I was teaching the same thing that they were learning to business guys. And then one time in the business setting, George Pransky, he showed a video of the inmates talking about what they were learning. So they actually, the business guys got to see that. And so they started asking about each other. So the business guys go, well, who do you think is harder to catch on to this? Us or them? And it was cute because I said, well, what do you guys think? We're probably harder, aren't we? I go, yeah. Yeah, they know they've screwed up. And then the inmates, they, they would ask me, so Kathy, how did it go? Now, how do they do with this? Are, do they, is it harder to work with them or is it harder to work with us? And it was amazing that they started to get curious with each other. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to have you all under the same roof learning this together? And it was cute. The guys in jail, they go, well, we're willing. We'll, we'll fly out with you. <laughs> sure, we'll go with you. But th that's when I just started to see it's, it. All human beings are the same. Well, yeah, different cultures. And I may use different examples, but basically they're no different from me. And, and, and the in, inmates are no different than the business guys and, and everything in between. So I, I will put me in front of any group. I don't care who they are, what they are. You know, when 9-11 when happened and it was horrible and I was traumatized watching the whole thing, about a month later, I said, you know, I'd like to sit with all of those folks who thought that was a good idea. Put me in front of those folks. I would like to work with them. See, that's how I feel about it, is it, it, given their thinking in that moment, it made sense for them to do that. That was real for them. That was their belief system. And I thought, I would love to sit in front of a group of folks like that who truly believe that and have them reconnect to their own wisdom. And, and realize what makes sense to them as opposed to, you know, belief systems they've picked up. So to me, anything's possible. So one thing that someone might, might think watching this is, okay, Kush has brought this lady Kathy over and she's just amazing. She's just like this, but I'm not like that. And, you know, one of the things I wanted to, like a theme of the school is, that this is really doable. Like anyone can can do this. this. Isn't about special about Kathy or me or anyone right. else. And so, would you say something about that? Like, were you, were you always like this? Were you just kind of born as, oh, you know, you just had the gift of the gab, as we might say in the yeah, UK, yeah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, or yeah, a knack? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you evolved as a coach, as a facilitator, yeah. as a trainer? Have you learned things over the years to get oh, better yeah. as you are? Absolutely. In fact, uh, at the beginning, and we talked about this briefly before we started, when I got, heard, you know, state of mind, principles, whatever you want, when I first heard it, I was getting ready to leave the helping profession. I, it just didn't look, it didn't look, it looked discouraging. It didn't look hopeful. I, you know, four years in $45,000 going to graduate school, clinical psychology. I, I, I said, no, this is not it. I was ready to walk. My dear friend said, just get the stupid degree. You've gotten this far. Just get the stupid degree because I was going to go to chef school. I thought, well, that makes people happy, you know, giving them, mm. you know, serving them good food and all that. But so when I heard this, it made me realize, oh, I, it's not on me to help people change. It's not on everything I know that Kathy knows to impact other people's lives. So I had that huge insight. Oh, I just need to engage other people's their own wisdom and point them in a direction like what's the blueprint behind them. I saw the simplicity of it. Now it took me a few years to catch on about, well, how do you translate that in a way that people can hear that without me making it complicated, without me getting stuck about, am I saying it correctly? So I went through a transition of unlearning everything I learned in the psychology field. And then, you know, how can I help people see that this really is truth and help them see that it makes sense. So when I started, we got a contract, we wrote up a, a request for proposal to get money to fund a project in the jail system. We got the money. We wrote up this great program. We made it up out of thin air 
And my, my colleague, Linda Raven, and I, we look, looked at each other and we said, now what do we do? We've never done this before. I mean, we, we just would make stuff up sitting in a coffee shop. Okay, what should the curriculum be? Well, we start reading stuff written about it. We start cutting up, cut and paste and writing in between. And we literally made it up, got funded. And then we freaked out because now we have to go do something. But you know what? I, I called somebody who I saw would be beneficial to our program. And she agreed to come in with us. And again, she pushed me out there. Like I'm looking to her to be the lead and she'd do her thing. And then she'd push me out there like the mama bird with the little, the little baby birds. Okay. Push them out of the nest. And I fell all over myself, but you know what? I got totally okay with that. And there was a defining moment. I had an opportunity to meet with a very high level governmental official in Santa Clara County. She was considering bringing somebody in for her department, which was like 200 people. So this would have, would have been a year's worth of work. I mean, this, there was a lot to get from this. So I go to, to meet with her and she's putting out these kind of bizarre ideas like, well, our people are really stressed out and I'm thinking about getting the mood rings and stretchy bands and, you know, maybe we could bring in some yoga and I'm telling her, well, actually what we do will sustain them longer. You know, you want them to understand where the stress comes from. And she's, but she kept talking about more physical things. So at the end of the interview, I felt pretty good about it. And we find out a week later, we didn't get the gig. This is my business partner. The person with the mood rings got the gig. So I called up George Pransky, who is my mentor back in the day. And I said, George, I can't believe this happened. They picked the mood ring lady. They didn't pick us. And, and, and he said, okay, calm down. Tell me what you did. So we told him what we did. And he's laughing. He's laughing. He said, I can't believe you missed this. And I said, what did we miss? What did, you didn't ask her about the mood rings. You didn't ask her why she thought the mood rings would be helpful. helpful. You didn't get curious with her about the stretchy bands. You didn't want to hear how she saw things. So, of course, whoever was with her, they listened to her, whereas you guys weren't listening. And I saw it instantly. And that wasn't us. We usually do listen. And so George calls me the next day and I'm devastated. I, I'm like, Kathy, I can't believe you blew it. It was so obvious. We, we totally blew it. And so he calls me up and he said, all right, here's the deal, Kathy. You're going to go further than most people I know. I said, well, why would you say that? He said, well, you get in over your head. He said, what do you think it takes? It takes getting in over your head. Do you think I was born knowing how to do this? Because we would look to George. He was like the rainmaker. Like he could make anything happen. He said, for every gig that I get, 30 fall flat. I said, really? He said, oh yeah, 30, they don't go anywhere. He said, but you know what? Doesn't bother me doesn't bother me. And I, that's when I realized, you mean it's okay to blow it? It's okay to fail? He said, Kathy, that's why you're going to go further. Because I've seen you get in over your head. I'm watching you do all this stuff. People are looking like, how'd you get in a jail? Then you're, you're in a prison now. You're at San Quentin. Now you're doing this. He said, you just go. Well, yeah, you blew it. Well, guess what? How much are you going to learn from that? So after that, I became fearless. Like, it didn't matter if I blew it. Mm -hmm. If anything, it would be, okay, what did we miss? You know, I've gone into organizations where the person who brought us in was hated by the entire organization and we didn't know it. And we're working with the group and they're practically throwing tomatoes at us. Why we hate her and we don't want to be here. And, and I'm like, how did we miss that? You know, so there will be times where you totally get over your head. But I say, get in over your head and get comfortable with blowing it get comfortable with, because that's where you get to sit back. It's not about you, the person. Don't take it personally. It's your learning curve. See, it's a yeah. learning curve as opposed to, and I'll say one more thing about that. I was watching um, Charlie Rose show. It's a great show. He would interview very successful people in the arts and business and one time he had like three top business guys, you know, IBM, all the big companies. He said, what do you look for in a person? If you're going to hire a person, what do you look for? And all three of them said in different ways, well, we want to see what they've done. 
But we want to see when things didn't work out. We wanted to see what they did after that. And I, I said, that's it right there. Because if you talk to any successful person that you consider successful, you ask them to share their war stories and you'll hear them. You'll hear them. So I think we don't realize that because we look at people and our mentors, we think, oh, wow, I want to be like that. Well, it wasn't like that. It's not like that all the time. Mm. And so we need to get comfortable blowing it. So I have blown it, but then I'll sit back and go, okay, what did I miss? What was I not seeing? Mm. And then I get to learn from that. And I don't think there's any shortcut around that. Kathy at all, um, certainly from from what I've seen, and and I again so resonate with that, and and can connect with it too because that's been my experience as well. And there's some saying, and I'm probably going to misquote it. It's something like, if you want to double your success, you know, you got to increase, you know, double your failure rate or something, uh, or, or or fail faster. And it can feel uncomfortable at times doing that, but that's where the growth is, and it's a great reminder for me too and you know people would say this to me that they were there was oh well you're doing this and you're doing that and they would assume that you know it's it's easier and i would say that for years i was you know just in a constant sake of uh, a constant state of just terrified internally because i was like oh, i'm going to do the next thing now and like i've got no excuse to not do it you know because i'm not taking my my thinking so seriously yeah. anymore yeah. Do, with the work that we do but then i would learn from that and and it would quickly go from oh well that that's now normal and i know when i first started thinking about the school there was some thoughts about like oh my god like that's a really big deal and it's amazing like the school hasn't even started and now it's just like okay now i'm, I'm doing this yeah, now. now you're doing it now you're right? doing it yeah. Um, yeah. And it, and it's yeah. so true with so many things. I was really lucky, actually, to I've not gone into a jail in California, but I, I was lucky to be invited into uh, a prison in the UK where some colleagues do some some work similar to yourself. And, you know, it, it was incredible. And I've inv invited now some of those prisoners into some of the programs I've done because you're right. It's it's the same. And again, it's I think it's such a great for profession for being able to just go right let's try this let's try that that will work that might not work but you never know and and oh. i really i really thrive on that because i think if i had to plan it out like i've never had and i'm sure you're the same we've never had a business plan right i'm guessing you don't have no a business no plan. no business plan <laughs> right i i just follow it it it's i notice after the fact where where things have taken me but i yeah if somebody would have told me that I'd be walking the yard at San Quentin prison, you know, I, I never in a million years would I imagine that I'd be walking yeah. the yard at San Quentin prison to go start a class. And I'm thinking they're going to take us with an escort to a special classroom. They said, yeah, well, the building is at the end of the yard and all the men are out and it's dusk and they're all, it's crowded. And, and me and my colleague too, we're walking I said, so we're, we're walking by ourselves. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just at the end. Just see that building. Yeah, you want to go up. You want, that's where you want to go. And she and I looked at each other. We took a deep breath like, okay. <laughs> and, oh, we, <laughs> and I looked at her. I said, are you tripping right now? She said, I don't even want to talk about it. Let's just get to that stupid building. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. It, again, it's, it's always having trust and confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. That no matter what, you'll somehow figure it out. It, you have what it takes to figure out whatever you need to figure out because you've been doing it your whole life anyway, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't get to being here no matter what you've done. How did you get here? We've all had to go through a learning process. We went to school. We all had to go through different grades and start with, without knowing algebra, without knowing anything. And we ended up knowing, well, that's that continues to happen as you learn to become a coach. It's the same thing, but all of a sudden people think, oh, it's different. Oh, I have to be ready or I have to. No, it's the same process. Oh, I have to learn algebra. Okay. You sit and you learn algebra and then you go on and you learn something else and then you go on and eventually you get a degree. And so it's the same thing. There's always this learning curve, always a learning curve. So there's no, so if you don't want to make meaning about that somehow coaching is different or making money, being a coach is different that no, it's, it's the, it's the same. Yeah. It's, so you just reference your life. Look at all the times where you started out not knowing something and how you learned something and came out the other side and continued. And, and it was effortless. I mean, it might've been tough at times, but 
you had faith in yourself to get through school or to get a degree or whatever it is you did, you had faith in yourself to do that. So that's all you need to remember. And often, even when we don't have that, we have moments of doubt. We, we still get through it too. Um, even, yeah, even going through the toughest times in our lives, even if we've had tough things go- happen to us in our life, what got us through that? See, that doesn't leave you. That, this, this connection we have to wisdom or uh, you know, natural intelligence, whatever you want to call that, that is inside you all the time since the day you were born. So the more I trust that I have that and it will see me through and always has, whether you know it or not, that's 98% of it. Yeah. Beautiful. Kathy, we could carry on talking for a while. I'm more excited than ever about our masterclass. It's going to be so, so good. It's so great to have you on the faculty. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Um, thank you for today. I, I mean, I, I'm just loving doing these because each one of these that I'm doing, they're kind of supposed to be introductions for the faculty. Yeah. They're just solid gold. And this is, again, I'm already got in my head like, I, w- I want to send this to like, you know, dozens of people. <laughs> this is this is so great. So thank yeah. you so much. And um, Well, my pleasure. My pleasure. And whoever is going to be in your school, um, just enjoy it. Enjoy the learning and listen to folks and just be, just be with it. And, and just take time for yourself because you know what? You deserve it. You deserve it. Absolutely. So I would say that to your students. Thanks, Kathy. What a great great uh, thing to end on. Thank you.